My Man TV. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We did uh, uh, Amarone, Amarona, excuse me, from the last episode. So I'm sticking with a little bit of uh, Italian wine. We're going to Chianti. Chianti is a pretty cool place. Uh, I've been there. I had a chance in 2006 to go to Italy. We spent uh, some time in Florence, down to Siena, down to Multicino. Uh, Pianza was my favorite town. Cool little town. You went in there and, you know, as soon as you hit the street, you smelled all the... The cheese shops just stunk with cheese. Beautiful cheese. I got the same um, Brunello soaked pecorino. Oh, amazing, amazing stuff. Beautiful area. And Chianti has been around for a long time. They've, they've been through some rough spots in the past with some really crappy wine. and But they've come out of that. Now they're really starting, well, not starting, the last 15 years have really come on strong, have become a very respected area producing fantastic wines, especially for food. This time of year with all the comfort food that we eat, whether it's stews, roasts, um, oh, it could be pizza, yeah, no doubt pizza, things like that, people start kind of gravitating towards Italian wines, in particular Chianti. I'm always nervous with Chianti myself as a wine guy because I don't want somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience with old world wines to grab a very, you know, uh, acidic Chianti and drink it and kind of get turned off on wine. That can happen because there are still are some pretty crappy Chiantis out there that are cheaper, that are very acidic, very um, rustic, like, you know, that people maybe can't handle. Now, there's a lot of us that can. I have a very good, strong group of guys and women and men that like rustic, old-world wines. And I know who they are. That's my job as a wine steward at King's Market is to try and help to figure out people's palates and lead them to the correct wine. But if I don't know them or not familiar with their palate and they're asking, I'd like to try a Chianti. I try to lead them to something else, perhaps, and then find out where their palate is and then get them a Chianti because, it, believe it or not, a lot of people don't like to spend a ton of money on Chianti. They expect it to be cheap. They want the straw basket, which, by the way, I don't have any with the straw basket. I just don't. Sorry. Anyway, we're going to get three Chiantis. The cool thing about this is they're all different in style. We've got just a straight-up Chianti. In other words, like the Columbia Valley can come from anywhere in that huge Appalachian. I use that a lot. You can use Central Coast, California, where you can uh, draw the grapes from all the different areas of the Central Coast. Or sometimes it just says California, which could be just Chianti, except uh, it's not quite as big. Then I have a Chianti Classico, and then I have a Chianti Rufino. Rufina, yes. And uh, we'll talk about that as we go through. Let's get started right off the bat with the uh, Villa. Actually, this is, I have to go to the back of this. Doesn't seem like I have enough light in here. This is the Poggio Benelli Villa Chigi Chianti Barracini. It says Barracini. Villa Chigi Barracini Chianti 2015. This rolls in at $11. Anywhere between $9 and $11. And let's get a close with this. Now, these are the ones that scare me. Unless I know your palate. You know, I might not just lead you a straight up Chianti. So this can be sourced from anywhere in the big area of Chianti. Uh, no particular area or subzone or anything. This is primarily Sangiovese, if not 100% Sangiovese, which is the big grape of Chianti. Sangiovese is the king of Chianti, or queen, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Caniolo can also be used as well as, what's the other one? Um, Colorino and Cab and Merlot now can be allowed in that region. So, yes, those are the grapes. This is primarily, if not 100%, San Giovese. Let's see what we get on the nose. So a lot of, like, cherries and rust. It smells like somebody dumped a bunch of cherry juice on a rusty metal... 
some some rusty metal. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Get a little bit of dirt, you know, dirt. Just clean up dirt. Yeah, that's about it on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. I'm kind of impressed with this one. Now this would be a Chianti between 9 and 11 bucks that I would be happy to recommend to anybody that wanted to break into Chianti. I think it's very good. Simple for sure, and not a huge amount of complexity. You get a little chocolate cherry cola thing going on. Just a tiny, tiny hit of rust. Way more rust on the uh, nose than I get on the palate. And the color is very light. But what I like about this is it's simple but good. It's, it has a delicious thing going on that, that I like about it. Um, a little bit of tobacco on the back side. A little dirty. I get the dirt action. But that cherry chocolate thing kind of outweighs it. It has a nice little balance between the two. Like I said, not huge and complex, complex, but certainly good. I would give it, I would give it an A in the good category as far as you know, just presenting it as a wine that I could offer to the customer and say, hey, yeah, you want Chianti? This is pretty good for nine to eleven bucks. This is a good Chianti. I'm gonna go straight up. I'm gonna go B minus B on this. I think it's a really well made Chianti. I like it. It's simple, but it has a lot of good things going on in it. It has that kind of dirt component. The rust is on the nose, not on the palate, which is a good thing, especially when I'm trying to sell wine to a um, customer. I do not have this in the store, so please, after you watch this, don't come rushing in the store. I'm not even sure where I got this. Hopefully one of my wine guys uh, gave me this bottle. I'll track it down, because this is a great little Chianti, just a stack. I call it a stack glass to put it up. This is good stuff. For It says on Wine Search, average price, nine bucks. I'm gonna say 11. Might be the average price that you'll find it in most grocery stores. Very simple. Uh, but at the same time, good flavors, um, interesting things like dirt and cherry and cola and chocolate. Yeah, just a little hint of rust on the back end. The cherry cola thing really comes through on the back side. A not a very long finish. Very simple. But I'm still going to go, I'm going I'm to go straight up B minus. Forget the B part. I'm just going to go B minus because I think for the money, this delivers a very good little Chianti that you can try and like and enjoy and have with your stew, with your pizza, with the hamburgers, whatever you're going to do. A group of uh, college kids can sit down and say, let's try this Chianti. And they try it. Oh, we love it. We love Chianti. Great start. Love it. Love it. And let's move on. So this is the uh, 2000, and, did I do this have a vintage? Yeah, 15. Hope I said that. Did I do a close? Jeez, I sure hope so. I must have. I'm gonna do it again. Sorry guys, sometimes I just get so excited about stuff. There you go. Hopefully you saw that. I can't remember. Here we go. The 2014 San Felice Chianti Classico. This rolls in at $16. Get it close up right away so I don't forget. I don't think I forgot the other one, but you know, sometimes I get all caught up in my verbiage and I forget. Right. Chianti Classico. This is the premier uh, designation in Chianti. It's all the land between Florence and Siena. Now, I'm going to show you this because it's kind of cool. Now, I, just, I read something about Gallo getting rid of the Black Rooster. Uh, cockerel on the label. See that right there? See that black horse here? Now that has a little bit of a history. Uh, the, they used to fight. There was a border fight between Siena and Florence. So they would have a race with their best riders. And wherever they met, that was the border. Well, they would wait until their, the, the uh, cock crowed in the morning before they took off. Well, in Florence, they kind of 
it's kind of cruel, but they, they starved or didn't feed their uh, rooster as much as they did down in Siena. So the rooster actually crowed earlier. So it was only 10 miles south or north of uh, Siena where the writers met and that established support. Kind of a cool story. Now I read somewhere where Gallo argued about the rooster and now they can't put it on the label. But they have it on this one, San Felice. So I don't know what that's all about. I have to do a little bit more research on that. Let's uh, we see what we get on those. I've always been impressed with San Felice stuff. Uh, this is Chianti Classico, again, one of the highest designations in Chianti. Let's see what we get on the nose. It sounds like a wheat marinade thing going on. Get a little bit of black olive. Definitely cherries, a little bit of rust coming through. Not as much as that first one. A little bit of dirt, kind of bark action, but very, very subdued, very nicely blended in with the fruit. Now let's see what we get on the palate. Very impressed. Two Chianti in a row. This, of course, has a greater designation than the first one. More complexity. Definitely get the chocolate. The chocolate with the olives. Like, somebody chopped up chocolate and olives together and put it together. A little bit of cherry juice. The cherries are definitely there. The bark, the earth. Kind of tight, actually. It's kind of tight. Has more acidity, which you're used to with the Chianti. But, you know, you just got to remember, these guys, a lot of these Italian guys, they, they, um, they're making this for food. I mean, that's what it's all about. It was the cuisine, and they want their wines to go with food. A little tight on this one. This one could use some age for sure. A little bit of leather. That rust comes through on the back end. But well balanced, well integrated. Um, has that old world stuff going on, but still, I would not be afraid to have somebody try this because I think even if they're not used to old world wines, they're going to like it. It shows the old world stuff. It has that old world guts, but it also has fruit. It's well balanced. It's well made. Good complexity. Um, uh, with you know, try this with spaghetti. Try this with stews. In fact, I might have a little bit. I'm having stew tonight. I might have a little bit of this just to see how it goes. But that's what they build it for. A little bit of lamb would be beautiful with this wine. A little tight. But I'm going to say that it's tight because it needs to open up some more. Maybe a little bit of breathing. Maybe a little decanting. Um, still, nice wine. That chocolate comes through right at the backside. A little bit of tobacco. Yeah, yeah, for sure. B minus. I'm going to go BB plus on that. I think it's well made Chianti. Um, I think I could, I could definitely feel confident about um, recommending that to anybody who walked in the store that wanted to try as an introductory level Chianti. 16 bucks is not a bad price. Def B plus for sure. Let's move on. The Friscobaldi. You know, a lot of us are familiar with that name. That's a very uh, well known name in uh, Chianti. Nipozano, Vicky, Vidi. Now I'm not trying that. I might be butchering that. Chianti Rufina, Reserva, 2013. This rolls in at $23. Now, Chianti Classico is all the area between Florence and Siena. This is east of Florence. Rufina, very, might be a lot of people, a lot of critics. A lot of people think that Rufina, even though it's not Classico, is equal to the uh, that are sub-regions. But now, now Rufino, Rufina is the only one that holds the weight of Classico, according to a lot of uh, wine critics and uh, writers and all that. So Rufino is a big deal. That's why they put it on their label. A lot of times you won't see these other sub-zones written on the label necessarily. This could be one of those sub-zones they didn't put it on there. I'm not sure. I'm more likely to think that this is just 
source from anywhere in Chianti. But uh, also Montes Pertoli is a very uh, well-respected area. Uh, Colleen Pisani is also a very respected area. In the, These are sub-zones not in Chianti Classico. Hopefully I'm not confusing you. But I take for instance like Walla Walla is a very well-respected area inside the Columbia Valley as well as Red Mountain. So you might liken, you know, um, Chianti Classico to Red Mountain and Rafina to Walla Walla. I mean, they're very well-respected regions inside of uh, the whole Chianti region. So just look at it that way. This is Chianti Rufina. Uh, let's see what we get on the nose. $23. Now, a load of chocolate on this one. This is interesting to get this chocolate tones. I get bark and currants, chocolate. A little bit of just a touch of red flowers coming through. Let's see what we get on the palette. Here's what the uh, alcohol content is. Thirteen point. 13.2% alcohol. Now, very interesting wine. I know a lot of you, a lot of you will love this wine. Chocolate all day. Chocolate, tobacco, and currants. A little dark cherry action. Good integration. Very smooth on the palate. I mean, I'm a, I mean, this is a knockout lineup here. I mean, seriously, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what I was running into. But this, my friends... Now, if you're kind of a Chianti snob, you say, nah, this is going a little more towards the new world. I would disagree only in the fact that you get that minerality, that tobacco, the currants and dark cherries, all very well integrated. Not as tight as the San Felice, for sure. I'm going to show up a quick close-up of this. I'm not sure if I did, but... Very cool label. Frescobaldi is a very well-known name in Chianti area. Good uh, finesse. It's light on the palate, but good strength. Um, reminds me a little bit of some of the Amarones without the alcohol, of course. It explodes with chocolate on the mid palate. It's like it kind of sneaks in there, boom, it hits you on the mid palate, and goes into this kind of a little bit of rust, a little bit of earth, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of currants, a little bit of dark cherries on the finish. Good length on the finish. Almost get like a dirtiness on the backside, but not in a, a repulsive way. I don't know how else to explain it. You just kind of feel that little bit of dirt, which you'd love. If you love, if you're into, the, if you want old world wines, you would love that. And, um, you know, I, I, I've never went out eating dirt. Of course, I have eaten dirt, probably because I've been, my face has been smashed on the ground when I got in a fight, and I got dirt in my mouth, all that sort of thing. I played football, got dirt in my mouth a lot of times in those days. And you just get that aftertaste of that, but it's not in a bad way. Hopefully I can explain that and, and get that across to you in the right way. But this has the old world stuff going on, but enough of that good fruit to really make it impressive on the palate with good balance, good structure. I like this wine, 23 bucks, you're going up to the edge a little bit. Well, certainly you can spend a lot more of that on Chianti. But you get the idea of how Rufina is such a well-respected area. I love this wine, I really do, I like it a lot. I'm gonna go straight up, I'm gonna go A minus. I mean, I just think it's that good for 23 bucks. I think it's a good play. I'm gonna seek it out, I really am. I think this is an excellent Chianti, I love it, I love it. Actually, I'm very impressed. Got a kind of a knockout introductory level Chianti, a nice Chianti Classico that could, it needs a little bit more age, and that's beauty from Rafina. Excellent, excellent program. 
Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch me. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.